non-scholastic activities. Scholastic means are academic, and non-scholastic is your sports, games, music, and other other activities, right? So therefore, though teacher is a professional one today, they are, now the recent term is, we do not call teacher, we call facilitator. Mm -hmm. Facilitator means, you know, helper, helping, assistance, giving assistance. That means my duty as a teacher is to assist my students to make them grow up, to unfold their potentialities, to help them to be good citizens, etc. Therefore, I, I will just skip some. Now, I will go to the, because I have to give time to the students also. Now, when we say teaching, teaching is actually developing human resources, developing the potentialities, each and every student sitting here and each and every of my junior friends sitting at the back, you all have grain of potentialities in you. If you go to Vivekananda's philosophy, you will know that it is the inner potentialities which needs to be manifested. Blossom. Right? So, that was written, teachers' duty is to gather the demand and supply of the human resources. They all have potentialities, so the teacher's duty is to develop them and according to the need of the society, according to the need of the nation, they are to be supplied. I was talking with one student, I don't know, maybe he's here, he's in class 12. I said, what do you want to be better when you finish your school? He said, I want to be an engineer. Yes, we need engineers, we need doctors, we need scientists, we need good teachers, we need good agriculturists, horticulturists, floriculturists, and so not. We need good teachers and so many and so forth. So therefore, all these potentialities, those who have that, should be nourished, nurtured, and should be blossomed. The teachers are not the whitest professional because they have to be expert in the subject. I cannot be a professional if I know only half of my medicine. I cannot be a lawyer if I know only half of my lawyer education or knowledge. I cannot be a teacher if I know only half of what is teaching or what is my knowledge. Therefore, teacher, professional teacher of today, they must have in-depth knowledge. In-depth means they must have a very clear knowledge of their own subject, which they are going to transact in the classroom. Transaction is very important. Dr. Gambhir mentioned about transaction. Transaction is how you take your lesson, how you transact the contents of the lesson to them. That is something very important. Mentoring, I just told you. And that one, another bullet point is there. Guiding and counseling, that is also important for a professional teacher, guiding. All these students, they look up to the teacher in school. And at home, they look up to the, to whom? It's yes, very smart children you have. So they look up to the parents, isn't it? So what is the duty of parents at home? To guide. And what is the duty of the children in the school, about the, of the teacher? To guide. So guiding is very important because there are four stages, my junior friends at the back, four important stages in human life. One is the infancy, one is early childhood, one is later childhood, and one is adolescent. Mm. And all my adolescent friends are sitting here on both sides. So, the counseling, because this is a transformational age, transformation from all angles, not only physical, which is very much visible, but also cognitive ground, that is mentally, intellectually, socially, ethically, spiritually, all these are transformed during these adolescent years. So your service should be, you have to mentor them through the counseling. Why this happens, how it happens, if any problem comes, how those problems will be solved. 
since I take I'm an adolescent counselor in fact I know when the parents they come some of them they come with problems the question here arises that some of the parents they don't know how to handle therefore the problem starts in schools I have seen there's a nearby school where I stay in Guwahati I went when they called me I went myself and I started saying that no, the problem is not with student, the problem is with the class teacher. Yes, it was found out. So these are some of the counseling techniques which you have to know, you have to keep it in your mind, you have to bring into your knowledge so that you can help them in their holistic growth. This is something very important, my friends. Teaching is not only an art. In books, the old books you will find that teaching is an art. No, it is not an art. It is both art and science. Art is something like the way you teach. Sometimes what happens? Some actors acting we like, don't we like? I'm a fan of Amitabh Bachchan. When <laughs> Amitabh Bachchan do his acting, I don't get up from my place. I just sit there unless and until the film is finished. Why? Because I like his acting. He gets involved in his role in the film, isn't it? Yes. They get involved at that time, like in PK, I think I don't know how many of you have seen. He's a patient, maniac, isn't it? So he showed that role, he got involved in that role, right? So what happens? That is an art. How I demonstrate, how I act, how I do my behavior in front of my students. But science is what? How to teach. There are pedagogical, those who have done BA, if anyone, any of the teachers have done BA, you must know that there are certain pedagogical instructions which is given to the BA students how to teach, how to teach mathematics, how to teach science, how to teach social science, how to teach language. So these must be expertised by today's teacher. Then I will come, I'm skipping, I'm taking the very important ones, motivating. Today's teacher must motivate the students. Sometimes we find that teachers straight come to the class and they go off taking the class. No, that is not the way. Motivated. Motivated is something you know which pulls you. Motivation. You have to know about the contents earlier. You have to know why it is important. What kind of aids you are teaching, I mean teach, uh, using while teaching etc etc when you meet a small child suppose the mother is failing to make her complete the homework a child of say six years or seven years right if the mother says okay you complete your homework better when you complete your homework I will allow you to see your favorite serial so many children's movies are there. Okay. What of what the child will try to complete? That is the motivation. Similarly, in the classroom transaction, motivation is very important, my friends. You have to motivate them to learn. Motivation. Motivation. Without motivation, you cannot pull their interest. You cannot pull their attention. And attention and interest, they are the two sides of the same coin. Now, Differences, professional learner again, professional teacher. Our five fingers are not same. So also all the students, they cannot be same in mental abilities. Okay? Why? Some may have little bit of lower IQ, some may be higher IQ, etc., etc. Intelligence quotient, I do not want to explain. That is again a long chapter. I will get it some other time. So, they may differ, even in a family. In my own family, I have found, I have three children, all the children, they have different interests, they have different abilities, they cannot be seen. Nobody wanted to be a teacher like me. Understood? So, what happens? Their abilities, their interests are different. So, we have to look to their interest. It is not that everybody will become scientist. It is not that everybody will become agriculturalist. It is not that everybody will become a pilot or an hostess. So 
teachers have to identify what they are best at. You cannot force somebody from arts to science and science to arts or arts to commerce. It goes according to the potentiality, it goes according to the ability, the differences which the children have, and you have to please keep it in mind. Another one, this I have brought later on. Many a times we come to know that teachers are not punctual in the classroom. Teachers are not sitting because you know teaching is a job. It sometimes happens by choice, it sometimes happens by chance. To me it happened by chance, frankly speaking. It was not my choice. I wanted to be administrator but it did not happen since my father, conservative father did not want me to work in the office. So I succumbed to his interest to join in the teaching profession but gradually I tried to develop the skill. Now, I've written over there, uh, honoring professional ethics, love, respect for the profession. Friends, if you have love and respect for the profession, everything will come automatically. Everything will come automatically. You must have unconditional love for your profession. Your target are these students, isn't it? Just as the rishis, or the ancient time, even now, we do the yagya. You know what is yagya? Havan. Okay? Yagya. Why you do the yagya? It is for the welfare of the society, for peace, etc., etc. So as a professional teacher, you have to do that havan, that yagya, every day in the classroom. You have to sincerely devote your time, sincerely dedicate your time to the most vulnerable population of the society, that is the students. Upgrading the knowledge, this I am skipping, <coughs> I am taking the most. Please see that one, self-direction and SOC analysis by self. Self-direction. I must, we all are capable of looking within ourselves, aren't we? Can we look within ourselves, teachers? Can we look within ourselves? Yes, we can. Why not? If I just close my eye, I can think, oh, this is my heart. My heart is there, my liver there, my kidney is there, right? My cerebrum is here, just closing the eyes. So self-direction is you have to look inside you. You have to point your finger this way. This is called self-direction. Direction means whether you are doing justice in the classroom, did you do any justice in the classroom? Did I do any justice in the classroom today? Did I teach my students fairly today? Did I teach them something new today? Did I tell them about some ethical or some newness which they have not heard to add to their knowledge? That is self-direction and that is to know yourself. To know yourself and along with that SOC analysis. SOC is you have to know your strength. If you are weak in communication skill, you have to improve your communication skill. If you, are, if you have bad handwriting, you cannot write on the blackboard, you have to improve. From weakness, you have to take it to the strength. A is to strength. Okay? I suggest, my friends, you see one movie, it's a short year. I don't have over here, that is called Nick, N-I-C-K. Nick was born without arms and without legs. Okay, Nick Vinicic. Mm. And Nick, Nick became Vinicic the Vinicic famous Vinicic. orator of the world. He moves on the wheel, wheelchair. Yeah. The, there's somebody to push his chair. He cannot, because no hands, he cannot also move his own wheel, right? And he is the most sought after person. When he speaks, everybody is totally silent. Mm. That is, we have to bring our weakness to strength. That is, Nick did not sit down. That, oh, no, I cannot say anything, I am invalid, no. He discovered his strength and he showed his brilliance in that side. Similarly, your weakness, your strength, you can judge yourself. Another one is that O stands for opportunities. What weakness, opportunities you can avail to strengthen yourself? Dr. Gambhir has said, 
exposure, teacher's exposure, through that you can upgrade yourself. Through teacher exchange program, you can upgrade. Through participation in seminars, workshops, you can upgrade. Fine? And that C stands for challenge. What challenges you have in front of you? You have one challenge that I have to make brilliant result. I have to help in giving brilliant result of the students of class 12 in of this good school. That is a challenge. If there is an obstacle in your part, in your teaching line, you have to overcome that. That is a challenge which you have to take. Leadership is one of the fact and that one continuous learner. Continu continuous learner means I have passed my MA and I have did my PhD. That means I should not close my book. I am still a learner. I say, therefore I say I am still a student of education and psychology. I am still a student. I haven't done so much of expertization. I have lots of things to learn. So your life, it is a continuous process of learning. And each and every moment when you get, don't waste it. You try to develop, you try to develop. Then comes capacity building and that I promise you, I will take a small workshop if you permit the principal permits in your school on capacity building, counseling, ability to introduce the new classroom culture. I have already seen the classroom culture. I have seen that the smart board, the discipline of the students, the activities already you are doing. That is something I have observed in the school. Then computer literacy everybody has, all the teachers of the same. Classroom management. Classroom management falls in today's professional teacher. You have to manage the classroom. The teacher is a classroom manager, right? You are a classroom manager. Just as the manager within his hands has everything, or when you drive the car, the gears, the clutch, everything is under your control. So similarly, the classroom should be under your control. They should be disciplined, they should follow the norms, and also they should obey the rules and regulations which the school authority has set up. In no way they can violate the school norms. If the norms are violated, then it will become just like a jungle, isn't it? If there is no traffic man, traffic police on the street, then all the cars, what will happen? There will be accidents, right? And they will be clashing between one another. The last part for you, that slide I will take. Being a professional teacher, you have to become an effective teacher also, effective. Your teaching must effect, impact, have a must have a positive impact on the students. For that, just see, you can I think read from the back, in-depth knowledge, which I spoke, practical concept. Whatever you explain, please stress on the concept of what you are teaching. Don't move away without explaining the concept, right? If the students can acquire the concept, everything is easy for them. They can write in their own original handwriting in the examination with practical concept. Motivation, I said communication I touched. Then pedagogy also I touched. And that one also I have to take in workshop that is quite a long application of teaching maxims. And personal relationship, interpersonal relation, that also falls in the professional teacher's job today. Just believe, when I go to hospital, or if some of you go to the hospital, when the doctor keeps a relation with you, don't you feel happy? Yes. Hmm? yes. Isn't it? When the doctor talks to me, what has happened to you, when it happened, then after that he comes to my family, how many children you have, what do the children work, okay? Then he comes to a profession, where do we work, madam? That means he is trying to make a personal relationship with me. And I feel happy. The doctor is so good. I immediately said, the doctor is so good. He's interested in me. So similarly, the same thing is with the teachers. You have to 
build the interpersonal relationship with the students, be with them, get involved with their activities, be interested in their work, because this is your job, you are a professional. And also, one thing, appreciate them, appreciate them. This is an enormous work which you will do. Yesterday it was so nice, I felt it with the education minister in the conference. I was just sitting beside his side and he told me everybody made mistakes. There was a little bit of small mistake on the part of the anchor. The name was spelled out wrongly, is it? The name was spelled out wrongly. Then the education minister told him, no, no, it's okay, 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 fine, let me show it. That the audience started laughing because I, you know our people, if we make a mistake, they start laughing, isn't it? So what the education minister did is really very appreciable and an example. He walked to the podium when his turn came to speak. He called the anchor by his side and he said, everybody make mistakes. This is nothing. This is your first experience and you will do better in the next. This is called appreciation and encouragement. So teacher's job is appreciation and encouragement. Just a word of good, just a word of keep up, just a word of that you can do better. That is a booster, we call it booster, in taking the students up in the journey of life, taking the students up in their life. I'll sum up, but the last one, today I have cut by, as you say, we have cutting the flame rules, you know, like me, I have cut quite a lot because of time constraint. There's a saying, a mediocre teacher speaks. A mediocre teacher speaks, only comes to the class, take the textbook, then go, go, and blah, 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 that's all, speaks, right? A good teacher explains, a good teacher explains. Even the concept, he or she will try to give. A better teacher demonstrates. Good, then better. Better teacher demonstrates, shows. The best teacher, what I've written? Inspires. Inspires, yes. Inspiration is the greatest booster you can bring a change in the life of the students. I remember my daughter when she was in lower case. Since he studied, the first and the very first day when he went to school, at the age of three, they were given some crayons and she scratched, you know, put some scratches and all some lines because they don't know anything to draw. The teacher, she drew a clown, a smiling clown, and wrote, excellent, and just patted my daughter at the back. She came home and showed me. She can't read what has been written. She showed me, my good God, I said, you got excellent, how come? And also read very good word, excellent, and the face of a clown, smiling clown. That is what? That is the inspiration. That is the inspiration which she got. And obviously, this kind of teacher's attitude will make the students go to schools regularly when they get the inspiration. And my own personal message to you at the end, teaching creates miracles in the life of learners, friends. Teaching creates miracles in the life of learners. Let us all create the miracles by bringing a positive change in the life of the learners. This is what, as a teacher with my past experiences, can just give you can leave, leave my message with you that your teaching, your behavior, your attitude, your nature, your ethics, everything will bring a positive change in the life of the learners. With this, very quickly, I will just address my favorite group, all adolescent friends over here. So, my young friends, the time is changing, isn't it? Time is changing and you are lucky, I should say you are lucky that you are in an environment under the guidance of the principal, I had a talk with him, I understood him, what is in his mind and under the guidance of the teachers to have education 
in this school. I told you, something you know sort of attracted me. I don't know, maybe as a student of psychology, sometimes I think, oh, this looks very good. There must be some reasons. So I found the reasons today, the dedication, the devotion. So you are, first of all, you are very lucky to have your education in this school. Secondly, Professor Gambhir has also replied, and I will just put the point. Your education or your studies in the school, the result which will be the outcome, I think you will be giving in next March, right? Yes. 12, huh? 2019. Will be the purely outcome of your hard work. 99.5 is your hard work and 0.5 is luck. Mm. And that luck is if the evaluator or the examiner gets is good enough. Remember that. So you have to work hard. Nothing you can get very easily in life. Every person in this world, those who are successful, they have come through struggling. They have come through a hard life. So. Be simple in your behavior, follow the ethics of life, follow the ethics of the school, show your respect to your parents, show the respect to the elders, show the respect to your teachers, the principal, and everybody who is associated with the school. And you try to adopt yourself the best, the best possible from the teachers, from the principals, and those who are associated in the school during your stay. So that when you go out of the school, your behavior will reflect Slopeland School. People will be able to say, oh, he or she studied in Slopeland. It's a wonderful school. Her behavior is so good. Isn't it? Don't you feel happy? <laughs> Obviously, it will be credit to the school, you know. When people will be interested, impressed in seeing you, talking to you, seeing your behavior, seeing your conduct, so they will be amazed. So try to keep this intact once, even if you go out from the school, the sanskar we said, the sanskar, the values which you have learned in the school and which you have learned at home also. Second important point for you, we have, you have two important goals in life. Do you know these goals? No. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you're saying. What you say? First, we have to get our M. Oh, yes, very good. He has come to the point. Sit down, I'll help you. We have two goals. One is short goal and one is long goal. Short goal is what? You are here. You have to appear your class 12 exam next year. You have to show your brilliant performance. You have to show your best in games and sports. Okay? You have to do good result. Try to do good result. This is your short goal. And what is your long goal? The long goal will be the preparation which you will do from class 9 onwards. What you want to be. Mm. You have to identify. You know, you know best yourself. Tell me. I'll just give an example of my own house. My husband was an engineer, and sometimes they come up with some little bit of conservative ideas that since I'm an engineer, I want my son to be an engineer. <coughs> okay, fine. He gave his entrance in Gohati Engineering College. He cleared after pre-university. That time it was not high secondary pre-university. Uh, he cleared, and then one fine morning he told me, he said, Ma, I'm not interested to study engineering. I asked him, why? Because this is not my field. I know better in what I am good. I know he's a very good communicator. He's a very good in communication skills and all, and in marketing strategies and all. Then I said, what are you going to do better? You just tell me. Then I'll pass this news to your father. Then he said, I want to study economics. I will take major in economics. OK, fine. Then after that, after that, he said, I will take admission in Gohati University. I will do MBA, Master Business Administration. OK, fine. Then I have seen that drifting him from that engineering and bringing him to the 
general course and completion of the MBA course. Now I feel happy that I have done the justice for him. I have done the justice for him because he is getting the field of his interest and is putting interest in it. Similarly, in the case of my grandson too, same thing that everybody puts in their mind, my relatives and all, that why not you should send, everybody just thinks about science only, okay? Then he said, no, I'm not going to study science. What about arts? No, I'm not going to study that. Then what do you want to be? Said he has the creativity, very much creativity. He said, I want to go to, have you heard about NDS, National School of Drama? Yes. Hmm? Yeah. All these people have come out, the famous actors and all. Mm -hmm. Because he does a little bit of acting. He said, I want to do my commerce and I want to take up that line towards NDS. Okay, fine. And he's undergoing the acting course under Baharul Islam, the famous theater personality in Guwahati. So again, I'm thinking, yes, I have done the justice because this is his way. So similarly, you know yourself better in what area you can show your strength, in what area you can show your best, right? So you think, you analyze, you study, you are an expert, you know how to, you know, bring the net, so many informations you can collect. So you give justice to yourself by identifying yourself. And that long, it comes within that long goal. Long goal is you have to prepare from little bit from early stage, do some studies, do some exercises, get prepared for it. If we want to take coaching for that, extra coaching outside after completion of 12th or 11th class, most of them do that, isn't it? Because it is very competitive in case of all this, whether it is lift, whether it is engineering, whether it is medical, whatever it is. So it is up to you. And the third important thing which I want to say, the present environment outside is not at all congenial. Do you understand what is congenial? It is not good. Okay? So you have to safeguard yourself. My students, my friends, you have to safeguard yourself. Yes, ICT, it is a boon. It is not a ban. It is a boon to us. The net from net, we get so much of information, but too much of use is also not good. Lots of bad things has happened in my own home state, I mean uh, home city, Bohati. The too much use of internet. It sometimes drift away. I do not want to say it because you all are quite matured enough to understand. You avoid, yes you need internet, but don't misuse it. Don't misuse it, please. This is my request to you. Have give limited time. Because you have a routine right from morning till the end of the day, night, say 10 o'clock. So you have to divide your time. You have to also play. You have to take part in extracurricular activities. It is not that you go and study, 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 study. No. That also will bring lots of stress into your life. In order to lead a stress-free life, anxiety-free life, you have to give up your excessive energy. You have to take out your excessive energy from you. Okay? And that excessive energy that is possible through your participation in games, sports, yoga, whatever it is in everyday life. Exercises, walking, whatever you do. Understand? So this is something part by part parallelly which goes physical aspect and mental aspect. If your physical aspect is not good, then your mental illness will come. Oh, I've got a headache. Oh, I've got a backache. That is mental, psychological, isn't it? If I get sick, lots of psychological ailment comes to me, you know. Oh my good God, I don't want to talk to people. Oh my, I am not feeling well. I don't feel like eating. These are all psychological, related. Physical and mental is always related. You have to have the physical aspect through exercises, through outdoor activities, and mental is a mental food. That is your conversation with good people, reading good books, going to library, and viewing good films, 
and listening to the talks and interactive sessions of the good people. That is the mental food. That mental food will enhance your mental level. And your social food is the interaction which you do with the society in the most positive way. Right? So just keep stress on all this and also be spiritually inclined always. Spiritual is not related with religion. Don't mistake it. Spiritual is, is your strength, your understanding, the awareness which you have within you. What is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. Okay? That I want to go for peace because I need peace. I want to and avoid this because this will lead me to bad things. I want to go for this. This will lead me to good things. So these kind of exercises you have to always do, my friends. This will develop you holistically. Holistically means all around. It will develop you holistically and you will find that you will be the persons which we are looking for. Which we are looking for in India our Prime Minister always says that we are now, after a few years, will be dependent on you all. We are already dependent on the youngsters. Huh? After 2020, did you hear that? After 2020, India will become the youngest nation in terms of having the youngest population. Right? Who will be the, who will be in politics, who will be in social activists, who will be in teaching, who will be in everywhere. So for that, you have to build up your leadership qualities, you have to groom yourself, and the last and the final word I will tell you, that is your life skill education. Since I do the life skill workshop, life skill is what? Your decision making, your emotional stability, your communication, your empathy, lots of, there are 10 course life skills. Our success in life it depends upon life skill. You know what? It has been written through research it has been found out. 75% of our success in life depends upon life skills. And 25% depends upon textbooks. When you will go and face interview, this is how you will communicate with the interviewer. How you will communicate with your boss? How you will communicate or make a relationship with others, how you show your emotion in a stable way in the society and in the place of work, that is amounting to the success. If I'm arrogant, if I'm always all the time in anger, if I show my fear, panic all the time, that means I cannot be a successful person. So your life skill is very important and the skills you have to develop. You can develop through workshop, you can develop yourself by observing, you can develop yourself by seeing. So with this, I end up, uh, I think there are lots to speak, but time will not. We also have a meeting today. Uh, with this, my blessings, my love to you, all the good students, the best students, I should say, remains. And I hope you will bring laurel to this wonderful school. Okay? And anything, anything, help or anything you want to ask sometimes, you can take the leave behind my card. You can ask me, you can mail to me. Don't ring me. You can mail me. Okay? Because as I, as a counselor, I can give you some my suggestions to you for studying study habits or examination to be stressed for examination. Right? So my blessings, my love to you, and to my all teacher friends, my love and blessings to you all. And I hope you'll be the guiding star for all these wonderful students. And do the best, devote the best to the school. My blessings to the principal, so that your dreams will be realized, already realized, it will be fulfilled, and as well as everybody who is associated with you. I'm really enjoying this school. And my dream has been fulfilled. I'm telling again, my dream has been fulfilled by stepping into it. With this, I end up, right? Okay, again, me too sometimes if I come to Manipur. Uh, I do come very frequently, but let us see, it all depends upon uh, Dr. Gambir. If he brings me, I will come. Okay? Thank you. So, uh, so I'm Thank you, uh, Madam. You have given good.